and welcome to my channel. So today I'm recapping the last three episodes of Love is Blind season four, streaming now on Netflix. My last video, my sister said that I talked a lot. I mean, it was a 30 minute video. Mind you, it was a 45 minute video and I added it to 30 minutes, but she said I, it was too long. I talked a lot, but I was like, wait, I have to talk about each couple and then talk about some personal experiences and it was five episodes so today we're only talking about three episodes so i'm hoping this video won't be as long as the last one so let's get started first couple we have liz and zach and that's where we were left off on the last episode where he meets with her at the restaurant and says i made a mistake you know i did i know i did too and what did i say in my last video i said bliss run run girl and wave your little finger at him and said i warned you about irena and the producers kind of left us guessing if she would say yes to him if she would still hang out to him because when they're leaving the restaurant he's like i'd love to do this again and she's like we'll see but then she comes over to his place for dinner they go on this boat date and he proposed it so i thought she was going to say no but she said yes they're engaged Oh, and when she goes over to his place for dinner and then he ruins the steak, he mentions that in his bedroom, he has a motion sensor that whenever you walk in, the Harry Potter music will play. I wanted to see that. I wish they showed, like, you know, he's like, okay, come over to my bedroom. And then Bliss walks in and it's the Harry Potter, you know, music. I thought it'd be really cool. Oh, and then they do that little dance. They're like slow dancing in the kitchen. I was like, Come on, Netflix. You can afford the rights of I Hope You Dance by Liam, Liam Womack. Remember that's their song that they um, they connected during the pods that he loves that song and she loves that song. And with Bliss, we see that Zach, it's, you know, less awkward than he was with Irina. And I wouldn't even say less awkward. I feel like he's more of himself. You know, he's he's more at ease with her. If you watch Love is Blind Brazil, um, there's a couple, it was Nanda and Thiago. And Nanda with him, she was always so serious. Um, she never really smiled. And I thought that's, you know, who she was, her personality. But then when she got with uh, Mackie at the end, spoiler alert, you know, she gets with Mackie at the end. She just has like this big smile all the time. Um, I saw her on Instagram. She's always laughing. She's like a completely different person. And I've seen interviews with her too. And she's like cracking jokes. I'm telling you, like, Tiago just like, you know, drag her down. She was always so somber. And with Mackie, she was always so happy. And that's what I see with Zach and Bliss, you know. I mean, being around Irina can't be that easy. As I told you, they're engaged. And I think for things to work out, Bliss would have to get over the resentment that she has towards Zach for picking Irina first and not her. And it's totally understandable to want to dig deeper to find out what was it that made him pick Irina and not her. So I understand, but I think if she keeps pressing on that issue, Zach is going to be exhausted. Moving on to Marshall and Jackie. First of all, he cooks that beautiful breakfast for her. It's like five-star restaurant, Michelin star quality breakfast. He makes compote by scratch. Compote by scratch makes pancakes and eggs and potatoes and all of this. And she's like so impressed. But it's also like Jackie. Is it Jacqueline or Jacqueline? I think it's Jacqueline. Jacqueline. <laughs> When a guy starts to date you, be it day three, even month three, he's going to pull out all the stops in the world to please you. Wait until you're in a long relationship with someone, you know, you move in together, maybe six months, maybe a year. The best breakfast you will get from him is him calling the burrito shop across the street to pick up a burrito. And sometimes he will make you go pick up the burrito. Poor Marshall, I feel so bad for him because what did I tell you? I told you the issues that she has, it was going to be too much for him. And you know, I said it before, she needs therapy. She is not ready 
from marriage but then sometimes she was acting like a bitch too when um she was supposed to meet his sister brother-in-law and niece and she's like i'm so stressed out i'm so stressed out i'm so stressed out and he was so understanding he's like you know i could take them for a walk if you need more time we can reschedule and the way she said it she said it she was sitting on the couch she's like no let's just knock it out like it was a chore and maybe she was just hangry because when they're at the table they're eating pizza with his family she's in a much better mood so you know maybe she was just hungry and then the second time that she was being a biatch to him was when they show up at Chelsea's birthday separately and then Jackie walks in and she's wearing this like cute little you know jumper outfit but it also is like they're in Seattle and I think they shot this in winter time if I'm not mistaken and Seattle is supposed to be like gloomy and cold and she's like in this strappy little jumper and I was like girl you're gonna freeze your butt and then Marshall the nice guy that he is offered his puffy jacket to her it's like put it on you know you're gonna catch a cold and then she's like no no it's gonna ruin my vibe it's gonna ruin my vibe and she, he's like no here here and then she finally you know puts on his coat and I was just like Jackie just take the coat and then you know when you walk away and go talk to someone else take it off and I understand as a woman we put a lot of thoughts in our outfits and we don't want anything to ruin it but she was like it's gonna ruin my vibe it's gonna ruin my vibe and I was just like just take the coat I have a theory that I think and I'm no doctor that Jackie might be bipolar because when she's having that fight with um with Marshall and he kind of like clapped at her she's like you clap at me don't clap at me and she's like yelling at him and you know she walks away walks back in and then hugs him starts crying and said I'm sorry I didn't mean to hurt you and I was like wait like what is going on you know like I said therapy because she has this whole self-sabotage syndrome and she she seems to be very self-destructive I used to have the self-sabotage syndrome when everything in life was great everything was perfect happy relationship happy at work and then that little voice right here the little devil you know is about to pull up the rug you know when you want to pull the rug under your own feet yeah I used to have that so I feel like Jackie has the same thing so Marshall my man run but then when he when they're you know having that fight that I just talked about oh, yeah, yeah, he called her a project I had to pause it and sit all my feelings I was just like because she asked him why are you with me and he said I saw you as a project that I can fix <gasps> Marshall you're about to be eaten alive my man and as soon as he said it I knew what he meant he just used the wrong word you know when he's trying to explain himself he's like what I meant is that no like you're not a project but I see limitless potential in you I want to lift you up and I want to empower you and I think that you know made her understand a little bit better what he meant but to be completely honest she does need work I think Jackie she's only known struggle love and she's only been in toxic relationships that now she has this guy that cares for her and treats her well she doesn't know what to do with it now we have Micah and Paul and first of all I kind of want to apologize to Micah you know because I call her a mean girl but I mean she came off very much as a mean girl I think what happens that Irina rub off, rubbed off on Micah but since then she Micah she posted something on her Instagram because I went there and saw the comments were turned off and when someone turns off the comments on their IG it means they're getting a lot of hate which sucks for her but she wrote this whole post saying that um, she actually apologized if she hurt anyone that's watching or anyone on the show that seen herself you know she sees that she's not very emotionally mature what do I say putting a bunch of 25 26 year olds on a reality show trying to find a wife and a husband 
yeah, you're gonna get emotionally immature people. So props to Micah for, you know, being self-aware. And then she has a conversation with Paul about Irina having feelings for him. And, um, you know, Micah asked him about the time in Mexico when Irina got really touchy feeling with him. And he said, yeah, that did happen. And then here comes Netflix with the receipts. It's almost like cuties gate you know remember um, uh, Zeneb and Cole and then Netflix had to you know put out the footage at the end to prove you know he says she said what really happened so this time we see the footage of Mexico Paul and Irina Irina's in the pool and uh, what's his name Paul he's sitting like at the edge of the pool Irina she kind of like reached over for her drink and what I see is Paul's foot touching her left breast. And she's got, you know, big, big boobs. He touches her boob with his feet and then she puts her hand like right here. So I'm just like, who, who touched who first? And then Micah meets up Irina for a drink to discuss, you know, this whole, hey, you got feelings for my man thing. So Micah being upset at Irina for being flirty with Paul and being attracted to Paul, I was just like, the hypocrisy of it all. When Micah, you're the one that had a whole conversation with Kwame in Mexico and you were like this close of making out with him in front of Chelsea. So for you to give Irina a hard time, I was just like, what? Here's a mirror for you, girl. Then we see that Micah meets Paul's mom, who is so sweet. But then Micah has this revelation why her and Paul are a good match. She says, yeah, because he's marrying his mom because she says they're so much alike. And I was like, that's not a good reason for a man to marry a woman because she reminds him of his mom. I get men that have a great mother, you know, kind, loving, good values. They want those same qualities in a wife, but there, you know, there's a line between a mama's boy and someone that wants that same qualities in a woman. I've dated a mama's boy and it was a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Now let's talk about Kwame and Chelsea. They had this whole conversation about like, very boring about dishes you know do you put in the sink do you put in the dishwasher what do you do and then about flushing the toilet because apparently she doesn't flush the toilet i can relate mm -hmm. yes i can first of all chelsea lives by herself she can do whatever she wants but if you are a very hydrated person as i am i drink a lot of water i drink more water than a person that's like super super hydrated my pee it's always clear as water if i wake up and my pee it's a little bit yellow i chug like three cups of water until my pee is clear so sometimes there's no reason for me to flush and do you know that 75 percent of the water waste in a household comes from flushing yes let's all be environment friendly and now you have seen those toilets that has the the big big flush and then the little flush so you you waste less water so, you know, I was, I was team Chelsea on that one, sorry. And then Kwame meets her dad and there was this whole dramatic buildup. Um, they're waiting on the couch and she's like, are you ready? And then her dad walks in, he's like the nicest man. I thought he was like, wait, does he work for the FBI or something? What is going on? No, the man was like the nicest dad. And then Chelsea, she's giving a um, little interview with the camera and she gets emotional because she said that, you know, she doesn't like being alone anymore. She says, you know, single life can be hard. She actually FaceTimes her friends when she's eating dinner so she doesn't have to eat alone. Um, and she hates coming home to an empty house. That worried, worried me a little bit because maybe she's like trying too hard with Kwame for the wrong reasons or you know what they say better alone than with bad company so i i think she's also looking for signs with kwame they're not there like the lube she opens his little side drawer and sees the lube and she's like oh my gosh i have the same lube girlfriend i've been with guys that 
have the same lube brand that I had and they were not my soulmates. And then Kwame has that awkward phone call with his mom because apparently his mom doesn't approve this whole thing. Can we all agree that that was a fake phone call that was like super staged? Because first of all, he's holding the phone like this and that means that she's on speaker right but we never hear her voice and i understand that maybe his mom doesn't want to be on the show like physically or you know she doesn't want her conversation to be out there but then wouldn't he like talk like this but then the whole time he's like this like oh you mad and we don't hear anything like there's you know it cuts through like to chelsea i i was like that's staged and it's also obvious that kwame it's not that into chelsea I mean, especially with the way that he talks about Micah still, like he's, he's like, oh, I'm so attracted to her. That will never go away. The feelings and the connection that I have for her will never go away. It's like, then, well, then why are you leading Chelsea on? Oh, and then they have the children talk. She's 30 years old. She wants in a timeline of three years, she's giving him three years. She wants to be a mom. And she even had this conversation with Bliss, I think, at the women's headquarters um, back in the pods. And they, they joke about, let's just have kids on our own and live in a condo. There are a lot of back best friends that are doing that. And there are a lot of women that haven't found the right partner to be a father. And they have, you know, sperm banks and all of that. And they have kids on their own and raise it with a friend. And Kwame, he's saying that he's not ready yet, that he wants to, you know, travel more. And she's like, but you can have, you know, you can travel with children. And wouldn't you talk about stuff like that in the pods? For me now, it seems that whatever they talk in the pods, it's all like superficial stuff. Like get to the important stuff, to the nitty gritty when, okay, if this works out, if we leave here and we get married, let's talk about the three most important things which for me are, you have to be on the same page. I think if Chelsea thinks that in three years she wants to be a mom, she should have addressed that with Kwame in the pods. So back to the three things that you have to be on the same page in a relationship, money, sex, and religion. I will actually take religion out and replace it with politics, but I'll get to it. Sex you have to have the same sexual desires it's just not gonna work out if one person it's more open-minded and wants to explore sexuality and this person's really conservative and shy it's just like you know you have to like meet, meet in the middle and then money if you're a person that you're a big you know saver you like to save your money you're careful with your spendings and you with the person that it's like a big spender doesn't care about you know buying things and you know whatever they do with their money is just not gonna work out i said religion but now i can totally see a christian person with a jewish person i can see a buddhist with an atheist i replace with politics because nowadays we're so divided that i cannot see a trump supporter with a democrat I cannot see someone that likes Nancy Pelosi with someone that likes Marjorie Taylor Greene. And then we found out that Kwame lives in Portland, not in Seattle. It's a two and a half, three hour drive. But I thought that Netflix had this deal. And that's what I really liked about Love is Blind compared to other dating shows like Bachelor, Bachelorette, that they made it from the beginning that they were going to cast people that lived in the same city. What do we have? Atlanta. Dallas, Chicago, and now Seattle, because the producers didn't want to put that, you know, that that bump in a relationship to have to move across the country for, for the other person. So they decided that everyone's going to be in the same city, but now it's just like, okay, even though once again, you know, three hour drive, but it's still, it's just like, they're having this issue, him and Chelsea, you know, she's like, hey, you work remote. I don't. We have to be in Seattle, you know, all of that stuff. And also Micah, too. Micah lives in Arizona because she talks to Paul about splitting time between Seattle and Arizona. That's kind of far. And then he's like, nope. Let's talk about a favorite couple, Tiffany and Brett. Uh, I, I really like them. I, I know I said that there's something off about their relationship, that it, it won't last. I still have that feeling, but it's just watching them. It's just, I like them so much and I'm rooting for them. And when she introduced him to her circle of, of friends, 
oh, her girlfriends are all so nice and welcoming him, unlike Micah's friends. What a disaster that was. That friend of hers, Shelby, and her drunk ass trying to be so opinionated. And it's just like, for me, it's like, you're not even trying to get to know Paul. You don't even know him. And you have all these assumptions. Shelby is a type of friend that is the single friend that doesn't want any of her girlfriends to be in a happy relationship because she's single. Even though Paul said, I don't care what she says, I don't care how she acts, but Paul, watch out because, you know, Micah, you're the company you keep. And with Shelby, I understand they were taking shots. It was a party. You know, once again, when you're drunk, loose lips sink ships. But they also say sober, sober thoughts. No, drunk mind, sober thoughts. So it's the other way around. You can totally tell how drunk she was by her slurring her words. And then she starts crying. You know, that drunk girl cry. <laughs> but you deserve more. You just, you deserve more. It's just, it's not it. And poor Micah, she's like, you not with it? You not with it? And she's like, no. Back to Tiffany and Brad. I thought it was so funny when she went over to his place and it was a really nice place. He's got all these like fancy gadgets. Looks like, you know, he makes good money. And, and then she goes in the closet, small closet. It's a perfect closet for one person, but then two people, yeah, it was a small closet. And then, cause she works remote and so does he. And he's got his work desk and she's like, where where does my work desk goes and then a closet we're gonna need a bigger closet and then he said if you like this building and i thought he was going to say if you like this building there's a lounge area that you can go and work because most buildings now they have a workspace for tenants either a lounge area or a rooftop that you can go have meetings and work on a computer and stuff so i thought he was going to say this like if you like this building you know there's a workspace downstairs but no, he says, if you like this building, we can get a bigger unit, maybe a two bedroom. And I was like, someone is bawling. Oh my gosh. If I was dating a guy and we're thinking about moving in together and I look at the closet and I was like, yes, this closet is too small for the both of us. And then he said, then let's just get a two bedroom. And I was like, okay, are you banking it? And then the last part of the last episode, we have Chelsea's birthday. It's kind of a reunion. Everyone is there, all the couples. And then this guy, Josh, walks in. Already, like, he's so drunk when he walked in. It seemed like he was bar hopping from his house to the birthday party. Because, I mean, dude, who invited him? Netflix is trying too hard. Like, too hard to steer, steer up the pot. I wonder if they asked Irina to go to the party and Irina was like, nope, I am done with the show. No, thank you. Because, you know, whenever they have those reunions with the couples, every season there's someone that didn't get picked, but it was in the middle of some drama or triangle. We had Jessica, we had Shayna, and then this one is Josh, and he's trying to get with Jacqueline. But in my head, it's like, who invited him? Because no one at that party seemed to like him everyone was like who is this guy and then chelsea the birthday girl he's like she, she said who invited him it, it was so odd for him to be there and once again i know they need the drama but if jackie dumps marshall for this dude i would eat in wendy williams words i would eat crow i mean i hope she dump actually i hope marshall dumps her i don't think that's gonna work out but if she starts dating Josh, once again, I would eat crow and it proves my point that she's really into toxic relationships and the struggle love. So this was my recap of episode six, seven, and eight of Love's Blind season four. Do you think that Jackie will get with Josh? Marshall, don't you worry, don't you worry. Your DMs will be flooded by the end of the season, okay? You're good, you're good. Also, what couple are you rooting for? Are you still rooting for Brett and Jeff, or Jeff, Brett and Tiffany? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and also hit the little bell the notification button so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you next time. Only 36 minutes, yay, not so bad.